Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today's topic of discussion is fluid conductors. Our objective is to examine general properties of fluid conductors, like pipes, tubes, and hoses in hydraulic systems. If we were to liken components of hydraulic system to organs in a human body, the pump would be equivalent to the heart, an actuator like cylinders and hydraulic motors would be equivalent to muscles. The passages leading to and from these components, hoses, tubes, and pipes, would therefore be equivalent to the circulatory system, the arteries and veins that supply muscles with oxygenated blood and remove waste. It is therefore worth a moment of our time to discuss these vital conduits that route pressurized flow from the pump to actuators and return flow back to the reservoir. Three general classes of conductors exist, pipes, tubes, and hoses. Pipes are inflexible, thick-walled steel conductors designed for semi-permanent stationary connections between static, non-moving points in a hydraulic system. Pipes cannot be bent and can ordinarily only make turns through the use of an additional fitting. Examples of fittings include 90-degree elbows, 45-degree elbows, T's, and reducer couplings, which make a transition from one pipe size to another. Pipes can be threaded or unthreaded. A threaded pipe for fluid power applications ordinarily make use of NPFT or straight threads. NPFT stands for National Pipe Taper Fuel, which are slightly tapered and depend upon slight deformation of the thread to provide a seal. For this reason, NPFT threads require assembly within a specified torque range to provide a proper seal. Repeated disassembly and reassembly, or over or under torquing a connection making use of NPFT threads, may over deform the threads, leading to progressively increased leakage. Pipes with straight threads, in contrast, are not tapered and rely upon an additional O-ring to seal the connection. Unthreaded pipes, in contrast, obviously have no threads and are customarily welded to a flange. The flange is then bolted to a subplate or manifold to provide a sturdy, leak-free, yet comparatively difficult to disassemble connection. Pipes are sized using two dimensions and a schedule specification. Outer diameter, commonly abbreviated OD, and inner diameter, commonly abbreviated ID, as their names imply, specify the outer and inner diameter of a pipe. Schedule refers to wall thickness, with schedule 40 being standard and schedule 80 being for higher pressure applications because of their thicker walls. Pipes are customarily sized using their nominal OD. The observant among you will note that the nominal, or in name only, size of a pipe has absolutely nothing to do with the actual OD or ID of commercially available pipe. For example, a nominal Schedule 40 half-inch pipe has an OD of 0.84 and an ID of 0.622 inches. This corresponds to a wall thickness of approximately 0.109 inches, where wall thickness can be calculated as OD minus ID divided by 2. The division of two is necessary because there are two walls. Similarly, a nominal half-inch Schedule 80 pipe has an OD of 0.84 and an ID of 0.542 inches. This corresponds to a wall thickness of approximately 0.147 inches. You'll note the OD of the related nominal half-inch pipes is the same and the ID is comparatively smaller for the higher Schedule pipe. This correlates to a thicker wall thus suitability for higher pressure applications. Do not think I'm asking you to memorize this chart, nor am I asking you to accept this act of monumental nominal stupidity. Call me crazy, but a half inch pipe should at least have one dimension that equals half inch, but they don't, and you have to deal with it. In summary, pipes are strong but inflexible and cannot be bent. Any deviation in course with a pipe outside of a straight line necessitates the use of a fitting. Tubes, in contrast, are thinner-walled, semi-rigid metal conductors that themselves can be bent to perform minor bends or deviations in course without the use of an additional fitting. Tubes are also sized using OD and ID dimensions with schedule being an indicator of wall thickness. Tubes, because of their thinner walls, aren't suited for extremely high pressure applications, nor can they be threaded. Tubes, if they must be connected to flanges, pipes, hoses, or other tubes, ordinarily use flared, flareless or compression, or flat face or o-ring fittings to do so. A flared fitting uses a sleeve and a nut 
that grips the flared or expanded end of a tube. After sliding on a sleeve and nut combination, the tube is flared out to the proper angle using a flaring tool. When the body of an associated fitting is properly torqued to specification, the union provides a leak-proof assembly. A compression or flareless fitting, in contrast, does not require the tube to be flared to perform the seal. A ferrule, rather than a sleeve, kind of grips the outside of the tube by cutting into the outside surface when the fitting is assembled and properly torqued to specification. Finally, a flat face or O-ring fitting makes use of an O-ring that is sandwiched between the tube and sleeve and nut combination and the fitting body. Tubes are customarily bent to perform gradual sweeping turns rather than abrupt sudden changes of direction to prevent flow restrictions and inefficiencies. A tubing manufacturer will specify the minimum bend radius a particular tube can perform. For example, if a manufacturer specifies a bend radius of four times the ID of a tube, it happens to have an exactly quarter inch ID, the tube can round a quarter with a one inch radius. No bend radius is measured using the outside of the tube rather than the center line. In summary, tubes are weaker than pipes, however are slightly flexible and can be bent to accommodate for minor deviations in course. Similar to pipes, tubes are meant for semi-permanent stationary connections between static, non-moving points in a hydraulic system. Hoses, in contrast, are flexible fluid conductors used between moving points in a hydraulic system. Being innately flexible in nature, hoses are obviously weaker than a pipe or tube of similar dimensions. Hoses are constructed using alternating layers, the number and composition of these layers affecting the hose's suitability for a particular application. The composition of the inner layer depends upon the compatibility with the chosen hydraulic oil. Ordinarily, this is a synthetic rubber that really forms the leak-proof, yet relatively weak portion of the hose. The middle, reinforcing layer, in contrast, is extremely strong wire or textile braiding wrapped in alternating directions surrounding the inner layer. This strong, yet porous, reinforcement layer prevents the expandable, yet impermeable synthetic rubber inner layer from rupturing when pressurized. The exterior cover layer encapsulates the inner and middle layer and protects these innards from the environment and mechanical abrasion. Ordinarily, this is an oil and weather resistant layer of synthetic rubber or thermoplastic. The exterior cover of hoses, in contrast to pipes and tubes, is not electrically conductive, making hoses suitable for use around energized electrical components. Depending upon the pressure requirements of a given hose, there might be several alternating layers of reinforcing wire or textile braid. The more sublayers in a given hose indicates its suitability for higher pressure applications. Hoses use two different means of connections, threaded or quick disconnects, both of which are crimped or deformed to grip the hose and provide a seal. Threaded connections, as the name implies, necessitate a technician use a wrench to attach the hose to a piece of equipment. Hoses making use of threaded connections are customarily employed for semi-permanent installations where disassembly is a rare occurrence. Quick disconnects, in contrast, make use of a female socket and a male plug, both with interior check valves that are unseated when the plug is completely seated in the socket. When disconnected, the check valves close and neither the socket nor plug leak. Quick disconnects allow a particular passage or component to be quickly connected or disconnected on a frequent basis. Often you'll find quick disconnects available on inspection ports and portable manometers or pressure gauges that allow a technician to read pressure values at specific points in a larger hydraulic system for test and troubleshooting purposes. Note, hoses making use of quick disconnects must always be firmly seated to push the check valve off its seat. An improperly seated quick disconnect will not allow flow. A false connection may look solid, but a quick inspection from the side will reveal the exterior sleeve not fully pulled down. Properly seating the connection should allow flow. Note it is extremely important to not connect or disconnect a hose under pressure. The major advantage of flexible hoses is that they can connect moving parts of a hydraulic system and perform bends without the necessity of special purpose tools or fittings. Despite their flexibility, tubes must follow certain installation guidelines. Similar to the discussion of tubing, a hose manufacturer will specify a minimum bend radius as a product of the tube's dimension. Similarly, bend radius is measured using the outside of the tube rather than the center line. Additionally, it is a recommended practice to avoid excessively short hoses, 
sharp bends, twists, or sharp turns. Some hoses include a colored ley line or manufacturer's logo that will quickly indicate whether the hose is twisted or not. Hoses can be clamped, shielded, and or make use of strain relief adapters to prevent wear due to abrasion, vibration, or high heat. Angle adapters make connections in small clearance areas a possibility without the necessity of a sharp bend. In summary, hoses are flexible fluid conductors constructed from layered materials that must be properly installed to ensure a long life. All right, I believe I discussed what I intended to do regarding fluid conductors. In conclusion, this lecture took a brief introductory look at fluid conductors, pipes, tubes, and hoses. We learned general properties of these conductors and learned to differentiate between applications befitting their wise use. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy liar partner about this resource. Be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.